ने हिंग मांगी थी कितने से मांगी थी नानी और कहने लगा मांगा मैंने सोचा मैं खुद ही ले लेती हूँ शी एड वर्क फॉर ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टी इयर्स इन द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री एंड नेवर रियली गॉट अ नेशनल अवार्ड ऑल दो शी डिजर्व इन क्वाइट ए फ्यू फिल्म we flew down to chennai took a 9:30 or 10 pm flight landed there straight went to rehman's house and told him it doesn't go well he agreed he said okay give me time till 4 in the morning maidan is my fourth fourth film with rehman uh, it was pukar first then it we did mom mili and now maidan i would like to work with him in as many films as i can tracking milestones of an incredible journey spanning 30 years rehman music sheets mom released in 2017 simultaneously in hindi tamil telugu and malayalam the first film that brought together shri devi and ar rehman the last film of superstar shri devi Mom emerged as a blockbuster at the global box office collecting more than 100 crore rupees in China itself. Besides Sri Devi's powerful performance, music was its highlight. Full of intrigue, suspense, mystery, Rahman's powerful notes portray dark and emotional vibes of the film. Mom's background score won Rahman the national award. it was not a romantic film it was a film which needed compositions which complement the entire situations of the film and the songs that we got were absolutely going very well you know if you go through the soundtrack of uh, uh, mom he recorded eight or nine songs some of them are used in background not complete songs but bits and pieces i mean this was his the kind of passion that he has the kind of involvement that he has he just went on and on and on and on in fact he trained a singer for almost couple of months to sing the thumri in the art gallery where sri meets nawaz that's a thumri recorded by a vo- new voice and he he is a son of a famous thumri singer he made him rehearse for almost 4 5 months and of course the background music was absolutely fantastic and he richly deserved the national award which he got in fact the last song which rehman sang was done at the last minute we had another song because most of the songs di- didn't have any lip sync so when we uh, pasted the song on the situation it didn't gel it didn't go well the same night me i flew down to chennai with my director with my writer with my lyric writer we flew down to chennai took a 9:30 or 10 pm flight landed there straight went to rehman's house and told him it doesn't go well we showed him the visual he agreed he said okay give me time to Four in the morning. I mean, give me four or five hours. He asked us to go to the hotel. He'll sit on this thing. He and the lyric writer sat there, and when we, when he called us in the morning, I mean, the song was there, which, which is very rare. You see, this is the kind of passion he has. He didn't let go of anything which he too was convinced was not gelling well with the situation, and uh, richly deserved national award for the background score, and. That's the first time Sri and Rehman worked together. That's the first time Sri got the national award for the film, and uh, Rehman, of course, has won national awards earlier also. This was an added feather in his cap. Sri Devi was four when she made her debut in films. As a child actor, she won hearts and applause. In her career spanning 50 years, she worked in 300 films. Despite being on top of her game, she won only one national award. This was for mom, but she wasn't there to receive it. सर्वश्रेष्ठ अभिनेत्री का पुरस्कार फिल्म मॉम के लिए मरणोपरांत श्रीदेवी को दिया जाता है So for mom when Sri Devi ji was awarded the national award posthumously 
Was it an odd mix of grief and happiness? Did it have a different value altogether for you and for the family? Obviously, obviously, you see, National Award is something which you hold very close to your heart, and it is something which the president gives it to, to you know, president gives it away. So it it has a, it has a lot of merit, it has a lot of value, and then it it is something which you cherish. Unfortunately, she wasn't there, and we had to collect it on her behalf, which was sad. And at the same time, a tinge of happiness that this was my desire that you know she had worked for almost uh, 50 years in the film industry and never really uh, got a national award, although she deserved in quite a few films. But finally, she got one when she had left us. So the sadness was that she had left us, and the happiness was at least she got it for the last film she she did. After a thriller, Mom, a survival drama, Millie. It's time for a period sports drama, Maidan, the fourth film that brings together Boni Kapoor and A. R. Rahman. This is a story of the glor glorious days of Indian football, which was in the period 1952 to 62, when the coach was the main protagonist of a film, Ajay Devgan, and uh, the name of the coach who was responsible for the glorious days of Indian football was Syed Abdul Rahim. Ajay Devgan plays his part, and not many know that India had reached the semi-finals uh, in Rome Olympics, and finally we lost to France in the semi-final by self-goal. I mean, there are many such things which people are not aware of. Imagine India was number almost number four then, and today we are not even in in hundred. We are probably hundred five or hundred six, and when the you know the this period are. Coach even says that there are not many countries who are aware of our country. We had just got freedom from the British Empire, so football was one game which was played by a maximum number of countries. And he says, if we excel in this, our country will be known world over, and this is a game which world follows. In fact, in India till the 50s, India the tournament football used to be played only for 70 minutes. The Indian team initially did not fare well. Only because they used to run out of stamina after 70 minutes. So it was this coach, our coach Saeed Abdul Rahim, who got the federation to st stretch the duration according to inter international standard, that is 90 minutes. And he picked his own team, and he went through his entire turmoil, highs and lows, and finally, finally in the end, he got the gold medal for the country, which was his dream from the Jakarta Asian Games. This is a story which needs to be told to inspire today's generation. Today, as we all know, India is a cricket crazy country. Cricket is almost like a religion out here. Football also is followed very passionately in some some states, like in Bengal, in Kerala, in Goa, parts of Punjab, parts of Hyderabad, bits and pieces here and there. And of course, the Far East too. Today, you know, we have got Beijing, Bautia, the Chetri. All these players come from northeast part of the country. So why should football be restricted to only these parts? And our film is coming at the right time when football is being written about, spoken about, enjoyed, seen. So hopefully, our film also is enjoyed and lauded for the efforts that we all have put in. The director has done a splendid job. We've had some foreign technicians too. We've had some, you know, sports coordinators from abroad. The VFX is of world class. We have a Passionate director Amit Sharma, who doesn't compromise on anything. We built a whole stadium out here. He wanted to have a football feel with the natural turf. We had to create a natural turf because today football is played on artificial turf. But we created a natural turf. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we had to wait for the COVID to be over because the teams were coming from all over the world. We had Japanese team, we had Korean team, we had Thailand team, we had Vietnamese team. The international technicians coming from all over. They all have come thrice, four times, stayed here for months together, and gone back. I think this has happened at least three or four times, back and forth, back and forth. I had a big model made for the sports coordinator to explain everything. So there's been a lot of hard work, and my director has been too patient. And I feel everybody who's worked on this film has been very, very large-hearted. They have given so much of time for this film. It's been in the making for three years, thanks to COVID. But nowhere will you see any kind of a compromise. So let's hope the audience sees it in the same light, and uh, the film is accepted the way it should be. We've tried to put together a film which 
which all Indians will be proud to see, I'm sure. Rahman, the music that I have, the, so far the songs that I've heard are absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure the background too will be extraordinary. Rahman's songs are considered to be slow poison with a neuroscience angle. Our brain responds better to tunes similar to the ones we have already heard. That's why Rahman's unique and eccentric song arrangements require repeated listening. It takes time for listeners to get engaged and derive pleasure from Rahman's songs. Most people's first reaction to Rahman's music is because it is so unexpected. You, you half in your mind, you will expect it to sound like another hit song you heard. Okay, in the genre. The moment it doesn't sound like that, I think you get disoriented and it will take you some time to get back into and listen to it in a fresh perspective. That's where I think the nearest explanation I can give for why people take some time to, I mean, uh, relish his music. His approach towards music is he's constantly trying to create a, a, a new kind of a sound, a new kind of... Um, uh, I wouldn't say melody, but a new deviation uh, within the, the melodic track. And that's unusual. We are not accustomed to that kind of a sound or that kind of a experimentation. So at first, any listener uh, feels a bit, um, um, uh, you, know, you know, removed from, from that track. Uh, but it's only when you get accustomed to it a second time and a third time do you start understanding what he's attempting to do. And that's when it settles in. And once Rahman, um, uh, his track grabs you, then it's there to stay. Whether it was Mozart or whether it was the Beatles or whether it was Adi Burman or whether it's A.R. Rahman, they have an intuitive idea of what will appeal to you. And it happens with Rahman every time. Every time his new music comes up, the first thing is everybody says, oh, well, this is not really Rahman, you know, this one won't succeed. One month later, it's the top of the charts. One year later, people are still listening to it. It's, it's just intuition. It's, what can I say? You can't describe, you know. What was it that appeals to you? It's indescribable. So there are reports that more than one lakh songs are released every day on digital platforms. And in a scenario where attention span is reduced to nanoseconds, how would you evaluate Mr. Rahman's songs and their impact? Well, this is what I've been telling Mr. A.R. Rahman. He should deliver the soundtrack at least six to eight weeks prior to the release because everybody knows his music takes time to peak. So he must give this lead time to the music labels. He must give this lead time to the filmmakers who work in conjunction and, you know, who are always keen to work with him again and again. So, I mean, this is my plea and I'm once again in camera, I'm saying he should deliver the soundtrack of the film, be it the songs, be it the background music, at least six to eight weeks before the release of the film. Because his songs need to be heard again and again. His songs have a value which only, you know, it's, it's almost like a, uh, you know, the, the, the whiskey which is matured, 30 years old. You take a sip and you enjoy the sip. He's, his music is like, you know, good wine. You've just got to sip, take a sip and enjoy. And by the time you finish the glass, you feel that you've had the best wine. So his music is such that, that needs to grow and that takes, it takes time to grow. This is my fourth film. Maidan is my fourth, fourth film with Rahman. Uh, it was Pukar first, then it, we did Mom, Mili, and now Maidan. I would like to work with him in as many films as I can. But then his schedules are so busy and some of the directors, they don't have the patience, the kind of patience I have. And the patience which is required to work with Rahman. So I, I sometimes go with the director's uh, desire and wishes too. But if I can help it, I would love to work only with him. But with the writer that he gives me my soundtrack, at least eight weeks in advance. The songs especially. Coming up next, an actor from Bombay to 99 songs, a long association with Rahman, a prolific performer in iconic films. 
Manisha Koirala joins us in our next episode. Stay with us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, press the bell icon and stay entertained.